Hey folks, how you doing? Welcome. It's uh, 422 2017. Um, welcome to another episode of Sovereign Hand Quest for Individual Freedom with uh, me, moi, Randy Keith. And uh, this particular uh, episode, uh, for a lack of terms, I'm just going to call it an episode, um, is going to be me talking about my experiences, something that I have avoided for a quite a long time. I talked briefly uh, with certain people about it, and when I first began this channel, I talked a little bit about it as well, although I did not really go down that path that much because I just didn't want to revisit what it took for me to regain my understanding of who I am within this universal construct, my uh, universal path, my pre-existence. And uh, any time that I actually even brought it up as an example to other people, just a hint of it, I always got criticized for it or they just looked at me like, um, like I was nuts. So for the most part, I just kept things to myself. I really didn't talk about things for a long time. And um, the other thing is that, like I said, revisiting that, would create trauma within me because it would stir those things back up again and I just wanted to move forward you know so really doing this channel the whole idea was to present the substance you know what I mean by that presenting the substance not focusing on the experiences because that, I see a whole lot of that going on you know where maybe I should have you know, and people would take me a little bit more seriously, hence this is the reason why I'm doing this video now, because um, I, in order for me to be of any true effect to what I've been doing, which is instead of for nothing, I need to present myself in a certain way so that you can understand that what I'm doing is serious. And so for me, giving you a little bit of background concerning my, my experiences and what I went through, in order to get to this place, it'll help hopefully bring some credibility um, to what I'm doing and what I am going to be doing. And one of those things is that I'm in the process of writing a book, and that's something I really didn't want to do, to be honest with you. I avoided that for a long time. I just figured I'd be just another person out there doing that, and it would just get lost in the sea of forgetfulness, you know. Um, so a lot of effort goes into that. For some reason, some people think that, you know, writing a book, and they're just trying to sell a book. And I'm going, have you ever tried to write a book? <laughs> have you ever really tried to work at something like that on that level, especially something that is personal and something that's um, experiential like this that's really difficult to put in words and try to present it to the public? Don't criticize when people are doing that. It's hard. It's not easy. Not only is it difficult to try to do, but you run into all kinds of other obstacles in the process of trying to do it. So people just flippantly just, uh, you know, negatively remark on that. Oh, they're just trying to sell a book. Oh, come on. Give me a break. Really? <laughs> Stop it already. Um, it's, it's not an easy thing. It is a difficult thing to do. Everything that I've done from the time that I was bedridden up until this point has been extremely hard for me. So, um, you know, again, not wanting to visit those that those experiences on an emotional level because every time I because it was so traumatic for me, I just bring it up, start bringing it up, and I just start full like I was short circuiting. So I wanted to avoid that, and uh, you know, but again, communicating those experiences would, for some reason, it just compels people and brings them in if it's interesting enough, if it's genuine enough, and makes a connection. It brings people in uh, to embrace what you're saying, not everybody, but it does help, and it's, it is beneficial for others. Um, but I did really, also I didn't want to focus on the experiences because I didn't want people to focus on the experiences. I wanted them to focus on the substance, but I know that you have to have one before the other, otherwise people are just not going to take you seriously. So my, my goal and my objective still yet is not to focus on the experiences, but to focus on the substance. Because you are not the sum of your experiences. I am not my experiences. You know what I mean by that, right? So anyhow, 
Uh, that being said, as a precursor going into this, I thought, like I said, I would talk about my experiences and do it with a thumbnail sketch. You know, it's going to be brief because we're talking about my whole lifetime. How can I summarize that quickly? Well, I'm going to try and realize I'm leaving a whole heck of a lot out. And there's no way that I can cover that. The book that I'm writing, which is entitled Reflections of the Immortal Self, does not deal with any of the experiences. I will not focus on the experiences. I want to focus on the substance. I know I keep saying that, but that's what's important. What I went through to recover what I recovered is for to give you the substance, not the process, because nobody could understand really the process. That's experiential. You must find your own experience with the substance that is provided and apply it to you and ingest it and allow your consciousness to be become aware, or should I say consciousness and awareness is the same thing, <laughs> is being aware of self, but being aware of self on a universal level and reconnecting to that aspect is the reason for the substance. Here's the substance reflection, you see it, you view it, and you're able to view yourself and contemplate it, and then you transcend slowly. Uh, it took a long time for me to process the things that I went through, so I'm going to go ahead and get into this right now, and uh, I have this um, scripted a bit so I can follow suit, otherwise I'll just ramble on. <laughs> I don't want to do that, and uh, anyhow, here we go. All right, so let's see. Also, I want to also want to mention this. I, I guess this is where I was leading. Uh, the reason for doing this again is the book, right? Because I will be reading. The book is still in the process of writing. It's still in a rough draft form. It's not finished. It's an ongoing thing at this stage, and I have. Worked on it a little bit, stepped away from it a long while, went back to it, that type of thing. I've been doing that on and off. I haven't been steady with it every single day. There, I haven't even even looked at it every single day. Every maybe every two weeks or something like that. I'll look. It's been a it's been a long break since I've seen it. So I haven't been spending a whole lot of time. Well, there's been a whole lot of time, but it hasn't been consistent. Put it that way. So it's still in the process, but. Here's my point. I'm going to read the first chapter, my next video. I will read the, uh, put it to audio and present it so you can listen to it. Okay, that's the reason for doing the experiential little video here. All right, to uh, bring some, some sense of credibility to what I'm writing and I'm not stealing other people's stuff and all the other things I'll be, I'm sure I'll be accused of. Anyhow, Let's begin, shall we? All right. Experience mode. Here we go. <laughs> um, September the 12th, 1960, Virginia May Smerdell gave birth to one Randy Keith Smerdell. All right. I'm going to open up some things that you don't know about me, obviously, here, but some other things that I've kept concealed for my own particular purposes. And that being, as you can see, a last name there that most people don't know unless they know me personally. So I'll start over again. September the 12th, 1960, Virginia May Smerdell give, gave birth to one Randy Keith Smerdell. At the age of six months, the infant Randy Keith Smerdell had an accident which resulted in a physical trauma of the body of Randy Keith Smerdell, that vessel, and that in turn traumatized the spirit occupant of the body because the whole idea of the spirit being occupant within these particular vessels is to experience equally with the body what the body is experiencing. So that uh, trauma to the physical body of the uh, vessel traumatized also the spirit and the spirit left the vessel and then the body remained vacant for 18 months and during this time it was messed with with parasitical entities that's a that's a huge word isn't it parasitical entities uh, and it lived off the body's energy this is a typical thing that we see occurring even with um, 
beings that are occupying vessels. It's that's going on. Anyhow, so at this time, I, a totally different being, okay, let's clarify this now. The being that left the body and the one that is residing in it now is two different beings, okay? At this time, I entered the two year old body and took over the identity of Randy Keith Smirdell. Now, first, I can hear people out there saying, bullshit, <laughs> whatever. Uh, now, I could have pushed the, the present occupant, I could have pushed them out, okay, when, I'm, when I entered the vessel. Or the occupant could have been removed prior to my entrance, okay? On this matter, I'm not really all that clear. So it could have been, it could have been three different uh, situations prior to me entering in this vessel but I knew of that the, the the body was traumatized that's true the child was traumatized at six months old uh, it was physically injured <coughs> excuse me and the spirit left now that's really what I'm going with but because of what I brought with me okay when I came into the vessel, okay, I'll just clarify that now. When I came into the vessel, I was aware of all that were in the house all at one time. All this, is, all this happens simultaneously, okay, right within the moment. Um, and this was connected on a soul level. But there was more to it than just the idea, oh, I know you from, you know, this and that you know, on a soul level. I understood the roles those beings were be were playing within the house or within, you know, this incarnation, you know, mother, brother, father, sister, right? Playing those roles because we all play roles, folks. That's just the nature of what it is. Uh, when I came into the body, he, I brought me with me this intense emotional condition and it was that of rage uh, extreme tension and a sense of violation. Now, this is twofold, right? Two um, things going on here. I brought that with me as well as what I ex was experiencing in the body when I came into the body, that the body was suffering from some trauma. When I ex picked up on that and felt that immediately. And there was this, this real, I can't explain it, it's just like, tension and just in violation and I brought with me and I knew that I was leaving something that I was in, had dealt with prior to coming into the body but I couldn't access it because I was being blocked from that Did that make any sense to you so when what I was experiencing before I came into the body wasn't a good thing all right and that energy I brought with me, and then I had this block keeping me from accessing any of that. And then certain programs started to engage, and then I started to what I call numb. I be, start becoming numb, numb. And this took a while for me to start becoming numb. In the beginning, I was vibrating extremely high. I was still connected and I was still in angst and, and this type of stuff of not understanding where I'm at other than I'm there and I'm supposed to accept it and I embrace it so there was a lot of things starting to engage within the body and with my auric field um, implants and so on and so forth that caused me to behave start behaving a certain way I don't know if this makes sense to you. I'm just trying to give it to you the way that I can, and hopefully you're you're understanding somewhat of what I'm saying. All right. So early on, because of this, uh, of what I was experiencing, like I said, this is hard to explain and it's hard to summarize. So I'm doing my best. Early on, I was, I knew that I was, I was aware that I was of some interest or concern to pertaining factions okay and um, so I was messed with early on and I knew this stuff was going on but I also was being put 
put to sleep. Okay, and <clears throat> excuse me. So there was things that were happening that I was made to forget, and my clearest a uh, memory, as far as abduction goes, goes back to uh, 1972, and um, I really don't want to go into the depths of that, but I'll just say this. I remembered everything up to a certain point with that, and then after the, follow the following day, um, when I woke, I didn't revisit any of that. In fact, I, fr I, was, I knew that it was there, but I couldn't speak about it. I couldn't talk about it, not because I, wasn't, I didn't want to talk about it, it's that I was, I, I was, it was like I was, hip I was under a hypnotic state not to say anything about it, okay? Um, and I stayed in that state of hypnosis until like 1993. Uh, not until like, until 1993. When I said like, I mean, I don't remember the exact month when certain things started to turn around at that point, which I'll get into here in a second. But um, yeah, it was, I'll give you an example. It, it was sort of like knowing that you have like if you had, okay, if you have a house or have, you, you live in a uh, rather large home and then one of your home, in, within one of the rooms in your home has a library and has a huge library. And then one day you go in, look to go into that library and you look and it doesn't, the library's not there. The room doesn't exist anymore. And all of a sudden you just feel like, oh, okay, and you just keep walking as it, it doesn't really matter that it was sort of like that I knew that there was information a huge amount of information that was seemingly lost but I didn't care because I was programmed not to care about it so I never revisited any of that stuff because like I said I was in a hypnotic state not to so um, how this takes place is it's done with implants okay it's implants um, on within your energy fields within your auric fields okay and it's they're not you know metal or physical implants uh, that's something that the military did for a period of time um, that's not the technology that it's used. It's it's multidimensional. That's the technology that it's used. Okay, for this, and um, what that what these implants do, like I just stated, uh, they make you forget who you are within this universe and the things that were done to you. It caused me to forget. It caused me not to look at it. I didn't care. Uh, you know, your pro it's programming, and um, also at the same time. Um, you can be um, implanted with, um, you know, with um, parasitical entities, you know, attachments. And uh, I remember, I guess I can talk about this one a little bit. Um, when I was five, I remember I got visited by the man in the with what people call the man in the hat, except for he was the same size I was. And uh, I w it was in this really bright, my room at the time was really um, an extension of the house. It was like, almost like a patio. And uh, me and my brother, or yeah, my brother was living there, but he, he was, he was going to soon leave at that point. But we were staying in this room, this, this was on Arrow in, in Fontana, California. Anyhow, so I had, you know, was the room, the light in the room was on, and there was something going on in the house. And uh, what it was was my cousin Frankie uh, was walking around, knocking on the door, just messing with us, you know. And my sister was getting all upset about it and thought it was my brother. And she said, "I'm going to call the police." And yada yada yada. But I, I end up. What I did was, is I walked into my room. The light, like I said, the light was on. It was bright light, 100 watt light or something. So I walk in this room, and there this being is standing right there, you know, by right next to my bed, uh, looking at me. 
and it was just looked like a silhouette. It looked, it was all black, and it was, you know, small and same size as I was, and it was wearing a hat. And just like this picture here, you know, so it didn't look like an adult. It looked like, a, you know, a, a, a kid uh, or just a real short, you know, a dwarf or something. And uh, so entity, entity attachments, uh, all these things are for the purpose of controlling you and making you forget and making you subservient. OK, so uh, what I found to be interesting here recently was that I was listening to a particular program and all of a sudden this side of my eye started to flicker, you know, just and all of a sudden this side, my eye in front of my eye, it became really, really bright and it obscured my vision, but it it was an object and it looked, well, it looked like this. Okay, it uh, it reminded me of a broken Merkaba. Actually, if you look at the apex of it, that's what it kind of looks like. And it was two toned in color, multi dimensional, um, a silver contrast, you know. And uh, that went on for it was about five minutes or so, but it manifests, you know. And I knew it was an attachment. And I wasn't quite sure where it came from or what it was, but it, it, it's something that's been around for quite a long time. And getting rid of these things are not so easily done. Uh, a lot of people think, they think that they're gone, but the truth is they just hide. <laughs> or they, uh, that's, that's for another subject, but um, I know a lot of people have opinions about that, but I've been around for quite a while and I've been through a lot of stuff. So... It's not cut and dry like most people think, you know. Uh, when you've gone through what I've gone through, then you would understand what I mean. But anyhow, so these attachments, you know, um, and these implants, again, for the purpose of controlling and manipulating and causing you to be subservient and not to be able to step in your power, you know. Uh, so anyhow, I've always dealt with illness. I mean, from the get-go, I was because of the things I had gone through and been was subject to. I've always dealt with illness in my life. I, in fact, I don't really remember a time when I wasn't sick. And it was during 1993, we're jumping ahead here, uh, to 1993, I became bedridden because it was a progressive sense of illness that was, that I had, had um, just was developing more and more with me and I became bedridden at this time and I I went through somewhat of what people would call perhaps to understand a reboot within me uh, during this time I got down to 152 pounds and um, I was in and out uh, my core temperature dropped really really low I mean you should die low for as long as it's it, that it, it lasted with me I couldn't walk I had to be in fact when I was trying to get disability at that time and I had to be carried into the place and I never got disability because I didn't have a lawyer and welcome to prison planet um, anyhow long story short is that all these various experiences that I had um, and things that I've been put through within this incarnation, they just overwhelmingly came back. And it was all fragmented and there was in huge chunks and but it was like all at once, you know, and it just it was a, it was really intense and it was I was breaking out in, in cold sweats and and heart beating in my, out of my chest and it felt like I was gonna have a heart attack half the time and be it that I was so weak in my body um, I mean, I was, I was nigh into death several times during this point in my life. I was, in fact, I was taken to the hospital and it was, the doctor told me, he says, five more minutes and you would have been gone. And it was just, it was really difficult. It was really hard. And I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy what I suffered with that. Okay. And, but because of, of that, this stuff started coming back. 
and I started to recall things and I started to become aware of myself on a universal level it started happening at that point for me there was a lot of things leading up to that but that is when I questioned everything and had to question everything the body was so sick I had to learn how to shut myself down completely emotionally I had to conform my way of thinking to that of that which I was feeling pain because I was suffering a lot and the pain that I had and not being able to breathe and just be on the corner of my bed gasping for, for breath I had to convince myself the best way that I knew how by shutting down my emotional connection to the body and that's when I started separating and, and I started seeing things and understanding now not just the experiences that I was that I've had and the trauma that I went through and what I was re reliving but the significance of who and what we are as spiritual beings and that we are infinite and the things that we've been told has been bullshit and it's really hard to put this in words experience especially things like that, that I was going through you can't really put in words even though I'm trying and I'm attempting so don't please don't try to be judgmental here you don't know until you know so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jump ahead here 2000 about around 2007 is I mean it this took a long time for me to process what I was now rediscovering took once I got well enough and overcame that which took a long time and to be able to process what I now have, was coming to know I didn't all of a sudden just stop believing the things that I believed before I still had a lot of attachment to all that it took quite a while for me to break away from that and start to step into my own in my own sense of sovereignty and trust me when you step into your own sense of sovereignty it is you <laughs> and you alone you have nobody to depend on when it comes to that that's the reason why most people give themselves away on this planet because it's easier to do that than it is to be alone and take complete 100 responsibility for yourself on that level on a spiritual level you rather believe you rather believe that there is some higher being that is that gave birth to you spirit is not born you my friend haven't been born the body grows the vessel is grown and you occupy it and you can call that birth but that's not who you are that is only a vessel of occupancy okay believe that or not it is true nonetheless so 2007 I began to inquire um, by searching on the internet okay I look for people who had similar experiences I was looking for um, things that I could connect with okay because it's a lonely lonely road and you need encouragement and you, you definitely need support of others that understand that because I'm sure they're looking for the same thing um, you're the minority you know so it was about 2010 that I actually I ended up getting very ill again and which is not too long ago six years ago and um, well now seven years ago right <laughs> yeah but anyway 2010 I became very ill again and I was bedridden for months again thank you very much so there was a lot of things I had to overcome in that process and again it was horrible it was a horrible horrible experience uh, and the channel this YouTube channel that I started here was for the sole purpose of helping people I've been through so much like I said this is a, a, a thumbnail sketch of, of 
And I, I don't think I'm really doing this justice at all. I'm just trying, okay? I don't really even like talking about this, but I have to, to some point. So I'm trying, folks. Um, uh, I started this channel so that I would help people and give what I had to offer. And I wanted to be genuine about it. But again, at the same time, I didn't want it to be uh, experience-based. I just wanted to go to the substance. It took a long time to process this and to obtain what I come to understand. And I know a lot of what I say sounds like what other people are saying. And the truth is, I knew this stuff before I knew, uh, knew any of these people existed. In fact, what I experienced, I did it alone. It was alone. I didn't have, there was no internet and there was no people. This was something I endeavored and went through alone. And like I said, go back to that word sovereignty. When you truly take on sovereignty, we're talking about on a universal level. It is not an easy task. You have to be response able. I have to emphasize that. But I encourage you, you must. Um, like, go back again to the idea of people thinking, well, you just sound like that guy or you're taking it from this. Uh, people, on the Internet, people think, you know, you take everything from everybody else. and all. It's very convoluted on the inter Internet. And it makes it very difficult. At least it has been very difficult for me to try to do anything here uh, because of that. Because uh, people don't believe you and, you know call you a kook and you know because I've had that done plenty of times uh, and one particular individual attacked me uh, verbally and uh, I didn't want to engage in argument because I know that's not profitable it's not it's meaningless it's it, it, it wastes energy and it just basically for me it, it short circuits me so that's something I experienced earlier in my life and I told myself I would never engage in argument I'm, I don't need to defend myself you don't believe it that's fine okay but I'm not going to try to defend it I don't have no need to defend it for those that know the truth and are seeking it will they will see that they'll see the the value in with what I'm doing and what I'm attempting to do here and they will take it f face value on that level and appreciate it and they will see the significance and importance of it um, but you know I posted certain things on my channel such as like the alien interview I know I'm going a little bit out of the idea of experience here but I need to talk about this stuff because it all plays part um, I posted stuff like you know the alien interview and the only reason why I posted that particular video series of the alien interview transcripts is because of the spiritual aspect or content that is communicated within those transcripts. Now, not all of it, but the significance for me was what it was being, what was being communicated on the spiritual level, and because I, I knew those things to be true, and it was affirmation to me. And I go, well, this is important enough for me to actually post this because anything with alien in the in the title, but will bring people will want to look at that. <laughs> I, I just that's a kind of absurd I know but you know we live in an absurd world so um, I posted it but did I know these things before I posted that yes I did yes I did but people won't believe me when I say that have I borrowed from the terminology and vernacular I borrowed from terminology terminology from plenty of people throughout my life and I'm sure you have too because if it sounds right and people know what it means when you say it or can make you can connect the dots when you communicate excuse me communicate a certain way uh, why not use them so yeah did I have I borrowed from people of course everybody does it's nobody's you know I don't have yet to see anybody that's that comes out of a vacuum okay but uh, so you know I, 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 I present certain things and posted certain content on my channel because I thought it was beneficial but what I have come to understand, I understood before that. And George Kosovoslis is an example. George is probably the only person that I can, that I connect had connected with the most because of I knew what he was saying. Now I I didn't subscribe to everything that he was saying. Absolutely not. 
Um, in fact, I've found him in, in plenty of Excuse me, no offense, George, but I found you in, in a few things that you were just, I knew you were completely off on, okay? Now, that's, I'm not going to get into what those are, and I'm not sitting there trying to make, paint anything bad for George. I like George, you know? Uh, I'm just saying, I don't buy into everything that people say, but the things that I do connect with, I appreciate and I'm thankful for. Again, it's a lonely road. And when I find somebody like George, it was like, oh, thank you. I, it, you feel re a sense of relief. It feels like you can breathe again, you know? Because this road of sovereignty, folks, is a difficult path. It is the most difficult path, period. There is none more difficult than that path, especially here. And this has been a slave planet. It's been used as a prison. And if you don't believe that, that's because you're not, you're not, <laughs> you've been conformed not to understand that's what it is. There's nothing here that is normal, okay? It really isn't. Things are not the way they seem. You've come to believe things that are just not true. And that's the way they keep this place, the way they kept it for such a long time. It's been very, very cleverly done. So when a person such as myself comes out and says that, says these things, um, you know, of course we're the we're the crazy people. <laughs> of course I'm the crazy one, and it's not, you know, it's not obviously that's not the way it is. And of course more people are becoming more aware of this, but it is a difficult process to go through to be start to start awakening to the truth of who you are and to start walking on the path of sovereignty. It's a difficult, it's a difficult road. So, um, again, like I said, the things that I, that I posted that would be other people's stuff is because I, I agree with most of it, you know? It is what it is. But you, you must understand that I was aware of this stuff and, and suffered greatly suffered greatly to be able to uh, recover this information back in 1993 and that was for me that was before the internet and like I said there was nobody there I was this happened to me when I was alone so the bottom line okay let's just cut this to the wick because I know I'm taking a long time and uh, like I said there's a lot here and it would just take too long so I try to summarize this and the best way I knew how. Uh, I've left out a, a lot, okay, but the bottom line, okay, my understanding of who, truly who we are as spiritual beings comes through my time uh, of experience, like I said, going back to 1993. And during this, from that time, I've been going through this processing of this, not really trying to understand it but just allowing it to process so it would slowly reveal itself to me because it was just too much okay the whole endeavor of what I've gone through within this incarnation almost seems like a big blur um, you know so I was very much aware of the things like I said that I've been posting that might be other from other people because it's affirmation to the things that I had already known. Um, so, again, everything that I, I'm, I'm going to be communicating with in the book that I'm going to be uh, reading from, the next video, I'll be reading chapter one of uh, Reflections of the Immortal Self, comes through my processing of what I experienced, okay? And what I've come to know as being well, it's my truth, okay? It is my truth. And the information provided uh, in, that will be provided in the book isn't experiential. It's just going to be the substance, you know? And it's, it's come from, again, I'm just, I'm sorry for stammering and I'm kind of stumbling my way through this, even though I, I have this kind of scripted. <laughs> I, keep, I keep deviating from the script because I just, it, it just, um, it's hard for me to be able to talk about this. I don't know why. I just still have problems with that. I think it has a lot to do with 
the what I was refer, referring to before, the implants and stuff, they still engage. I learned how to bypass this stuff, but when I start getting into my mind, it starts to really affect me. So I kind of bypass things from thinking about it, and I just go through my heart core energy. And I didn't prepare myself before I started this to do this video, so I apologize. Uh, the information here, again, like I was saying, it's my personal insight. It's through the many years of experience and self-reflection and inquiry. Okay, I'm not a researcher. I inquire. And the whole reason for inquiring is so that I can have present company that I can relate to. Okay, I needed company. Like I mentioned, you, it's a lonely road, so you need something that's supportive, that helps you in the process. And uh, trust me when I say it, I suffered, I, I know I keep mentioning this, but I did. I have. I've suffered greatly and en endured unimaginable circumstances to bring w what I have to offer. Okay? So hopefully this helps to bring some credibility to the reason why I'm writing this book. So when I read it and you hear it, it helps you. You know? Um, now, anybody can believe whatever they want to believe concerning myself and, you know, but I paid a great price for this. So to what extent, I don't even really know as of yet. I mean, it's just like I said, everything's been so like a huge roller coaster ride. Uh, it's almost like a blur. I don't know when the, where to begin and end because it all seems to be all the same thing. Uh, for those that would look to dismiss what you know, what I have to offer um, as being fantasy or I'm making it up or whatever, well, let me just say this. And I know for those that are seeking truth will understand this quote. Now, this quote is my quote, but it's like a lot of things that I've been, uh, the gems that I've been accumulating and bringing into um, record, so to speak. Um, are extremely valuable, like hence the term gym, right? It's of great value, and it, you will see the value in this statement, and it's worth contemplating. Okay, here it is. Here, excuse me. Here it is. All that which was, is, and that which will ever be, was but first imagined. Therefore, there is nothing in this universe that isn't made up. Peace.